All right, all right. Shalom, shalom, everybody. It is your brew here, Bon Shemayim, back here with another one. I appreciate y'all uh, tuning in, uh, especially, you know, I gave y'all a lot of lighter videos this week, not the heavy studying videos. This video will be heavy studying. This is my second time having to do it. I was like probably more than halfway through and my computer shut down. So that kind of sucked. So I'm going to give y'all overview, right? So today, uh, we're going to go into some books that y'all probably never read, right? And this is, so I wanted to give my outline of what I believe with dealing with the books uh, that are not in the, like the, the King James 1611, pretty much the Old Testament, the Apocrypha in the New Testament, right? This is my opinion on that. I read all, I read, well, I don't, I'm not going to say I read all the books. I will say I've read a lot of the books, like most of them, more books than you could probably imagine, but some of them are literally go against the Bible. So any book like that, that literally tries to paint a whole different narrative than what the Bible is saying, I, I can't, I can't get down with it. Not even for any to put fillers in the story with, uh, but some of the books actually explain the details that's how you should use it you should use the extra books to explain details that you're missing from the bible right like the book of jubilees the book of yasher uh the book of enoch we should be using these books uh to fill the holes not using them to go against the bible because you could always like i say you could take one line out of any book and make it mean whatever you want but this is not about doing that. This is about trying to get the understanding of what the Bible is saying, get the whole story put together. So think about it like this. Genesis is the first 3,500 years of man, right? Or is it the first 2,500 years of man, right? Genesis is the first 2,500 years of man, I believe. So the first 2,500 years is one book. The last 3,500 years up into Christ's coming in the new kingdom is literally the whole rest of the Bible. All the rest of the books. <laughs> Genesis is this big. It's talking about the first 2,500 years of life. So that's why it's important to go into these some of these other books. So today we're going into the Lost Books of Eden. If you've never read that, it's a great read. It, it fills in some of the holes. The Lost Books of Eden and um, the uh, Book of Second Baruch, right? We're going to go into the Bible for sure, but we're going to go into some of these books to get the story out. Now, with all that being said, let's get into it. <laughs> all right. So today's video, we're going to watch uh, Elder Bednar says, you don't have to die to find out where you'll go on the day of judgment. <laughs> it's by a group called Called to Share. So let's let's get it. Te preguntan cómo hacer el día del juicio. How will I know where I'm going to go? ¿Cómo voy a saber a dónde voy a ir? I can answer that for you. Yo puedo contestarles eso. You don't have to die to find out. No pueden morir, no tienen que morir para descubrirlo. If living the gospel for you is hard, si vivir el evangelio para ustedes es difícil. If it's a chore, si es una tarea, un deber. Oh, if I just wasn't a Latter-day Saint, I could have fun. Oh, y si yo no fuera santo los últimos días podría divertirme. If that's what you're like when you die. Si eso... Hold on, man. I would like to ask him, what is living the gospel anyway? What do you mean you don't have to wait until you get there to know? Right? Because you're kind of contradicting a lot of stuff, right? So I would like to ask him, what do you mean by living the gospel? You mean by keeping the commandments and laws, right? And knowing that you might fail them, but knowing that Christ's grace is going to cover you and then you, you continue to get better until you conquer each one of them. Is, is that what you're talking about? Having faith and keeping his spirit and keeping the law and keeping his holy days and keeping his, uh, uh, his feast, right? <laughs> Disdaining from certain foods. Is that what he's talking about? Because I... I'm pretty sure that's not what he's talking about. Let's keep going. Es la manera que sienten cuando se mueren. Guess where you're going to go? Adivinen dónde van a ir. With other people who feel the same way. Con otras personas que sientan lo mismo. Because that's the law that you've learned to love. Porque esa es la ley que aprendieron a amar. 
If during the course of your life, si durante el curso de vuestras vidas, a little bit at a time, un poco a la vez, you have learned to love living the gospel. Han aprendido a amar vivir el evangelio. Guess where you're going when you die? Adivinen dónde van cuando se mueren. With people who love living the gospel. Con gente que ama. He said, "Who, if you've learned to love living the gospel, you don't know what." And then look, he got a smug look on his face too. You don't know what love is without the law. You got to go into the law to know how did God expected us to treat each other and, and how he expected us to uphold and treat him. So I wouldn't believe that. And then, uh, first off, don't believe that. And then he, what did he say? You don't have to wonder if, you, if you're going to go. It's like that. Have y'all ever, uh, uh, anybody, have y'all ever played sports? I would compare it to playing sports. Y'all ever had to make a team? You know, when you got to make a team, you got to go to tryouts. Tryouts could be from two weeks to four weeks, maybe five weeks, but I don't think it really goes past five weeks. But tryouts could be a long period. Now, during tryouts, most of the time, for majority of the teams, you don't know if you made it. You don't know if you're going to make it. What determines if you make the team is the effort you put in during tryouts, right? So if our time on earth is our trial that what we must go through in order to receive the kingdom right then you just keep working as hard as you can during the tryout session and you will see at the end of the tryouts you go and they got a a list on the wall where they let you know everybody who made the team and normally who's starting and who not starting every position they'll normally have down there after tryouts right so it's important to don't look at it his way as if you don't have to know because that's going to get you messed up. What did Christ say? He said, you don't have to wonder. What did Christ say? Christ says, all those who endure to the end, the same shall be called saved. Right? The same shall be called saved by making it to the end. So you got to make it to the end of this, to the end of trials or the end of practice in order to be saved. Or make it to the end of your life in the truth, right? In order to be saved, right? You make it to your life in the truth, to the end of your life in the truth, keeping the commandments, doing everything, and then you could get the, the bosom of Abraham instead of get uh, Sheol or Hell or Hades, right? Let's keep going. How I vivir el Evangelio. The Lord is not going to have to tell you. El Señor no les va a tener que decir. When you come into his presence, Cuando lleguen a su presencia, you'll, you, don't, you won't think, gee, I hope he's in a really good mood today. That's true. You won't think that because when you walk into the Lord's presence on his arrival, you're going to mourn yourself for the wickedness you've done. You're going to bewail yourself for the sins that you did against the Most High ignorantly, right? Because now all things will be known. So you're going to know all the things you did wrong. It won't be like, man, it's hard to even track it. Some people literally think they're not breaking the law. That's why I be telling people, come around me and I guarantee I'll find the law you broke. Now, I'm not searching for that, but I just, like the Bible says, the person who say they have not seen, I will burn coal, coals upon their head, right? So <clears throat> let's keep, let's get it. Roy, I hope he gives me some extra points. Espero que me dé algunos puntos extra. So my grade will be a little bit better. Para que mi lugar sea un poco mejor, mi, mi, mi premio. When you come into his presence. Cuando lleguen a su presencia. You will go where you know you belong. Ustedes van a ir a donde ustedes saben que pertenecen. You see, I just put the power on you. When you come into Christ's presence, you're going to go to where you know you belong. So what about the people who are going to go run and hide in the rocks and clefts because of the fear of the Lord? Like, is they not even in his presence and they hiding? No, you, everybody is going to know. Those people who go in there, they're going to go there and they're going to know all that they did wrong and bewail themselves on their way there. The other ones who not going, they're going to be hiding in the rocks and cliffs, hoping not to get that butt whooping. And we're going through some of those scriptures. So let's keep it going. Based on what we have desired to do and become while we have lived on the earth. Basados en lo que han deseado ser y transformarse mientras vivían en la tierra. 
If you can look your bishop in the eye, si ustedes pueden mirar al obispo wow. a los ojos, because you're worthy and clean, porque ustedes son dignos y limpios, you already know what the day of judgment will be like. Usted He said, if you could look your bishop in the eye, because you're already worthy and clean, you already know what the day of judgment is going to be like. What do your bishop have to do with anything? You got to stand before God, not a bishop. See, this would be killing me, man. Stuff like this right here. People do a lot to please other men, right? Like people do a lot to please me and me and the brother. Shout out one, two, three, J. Shout out, brother. <laughs> Shalom, brother. So uh, I've been talking to one, two, three, J, and we was talking about this, and it don't make sense to me because I've always felt like this. God knows. I can't hide from God. So why hide from you? Like I get that the Bible says uh, that uh, to have a, a, a clean conscience, right? To do all things with a clean conscience. And if something that you does offends your brother, don't do it around them, right? Because if, if something you does is making your brother weak in the faith, don't do it around them. Because they might use that as an excuse to go do something that's really against the law, right? So I get that. Then it's okay. Don't let everybody know everything. Just because you know sometimes people is against certain things that aren't even lawful. Right? Because we do that. We like we make up things that we should be against to say we should be against and use scriptures to point to, oh, this is wrong. This is wrong. Like I've saw people use uh, scriptures where they were lighting up a, a burnt offering to tell people they shouldn't smoke. There is nowhere in the Bible where it says don't smoke. Not one time in the Bible, period. So, like, I'm not advocating and saying, go buy some cigarettes. Go buy some, you know, whatever. I'm saying it's not saying that in the Bible. So, I'm not going to persecute you off of what the Bible says. When the Bible says to stay sober and keep your temple clean, you're, it's talking about from demons and evil spirits. Sober is, is one-mindedness, calmness, peace. It has nothing to do with all of those other things so that's what i mean like people will be adding to the law or or you know trying to add more to the law we have enough laws and then some of the brothers might be breaking the law like i heard that a lot of people be bearing false witness which is is a sin to death like that's punishable by death So how could you sit there and you bear false witness and then you say, you know what? I'm doing everything right. Y'all should aim to be like me. This is how we got to do it. You can't do that then. You can't do it. You be in a contradiction. And, and there's no reason to pretend to be perfect. I done heard a lot from talking to Bruce about how Bruce do things one way and then they come home and They'll tell brothers not to smoke, not to drink, not to do whatever. And then they come home, they smoke and drink and pop and peels, everything. That's weird to me. That's weird to me because you know what? Y'all can't do nothing to me. Nothing but hurt me. All y'all could do is shoot me, stab me, kill me. Y'all can't do nothing but hurt me. You cannot hurt my soul. God knows what I do. God knows. And I've talked to God about it. And that's what I feel like people should do. If they have weaknesses or they find themselves breaking the law, talk to God and then do your best to override them. Even if the weakness, even if you consider some a weakness and it's not even the law is not against it, then still talk to God to make sure that it's all right in your spirit and in your conscience. But this is what you do. You don't. God knows. You don't have to put on a show for people. It's not about. I love y'all in the chat and y'all watching my videos and giving me support, but I'm doing this to get the message out. If I could, if, if my message could touch two people and give them the correct understanding, that's all that matters. I don't care if a hundred thousand watched it. If only two people get it, that's good for me. Cause I know out of majority of the people who watch it, a lot of people won't get it. There's always going to be some slander, some bad or some, and, and people will argue Uh, uh, people will argue doctrines that they don't even know thoroughly. Like, how are you going to argue me a doctrine that you aren't vested in in the Bible? So once I start poking holes in the doctrine, they don't have nowhere to go. So that's what I'm saying. This is not about impressing people. This is about 
trying out for the team, like we mentioned earlier, you're trying out for the team and you're working your hardest to make it. That's what this is about. So at the end of the day, you could get a well done. Like Derek Hatton. What's that dude named Derek Hatton? 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 Derek Hatton? Had that song well done. Like well done. You get that well done. That's what we're working towards. That's what we're working for. We're not doing it for people. Anyways, let's keep going. I kind of went off subject. Ustedes ya saben cómo será el día del juicio. There's no awkwardness. No hay torpeza en eso. No embarrassment. No hay vergüenza. No shame. No hay vergüenza. Joyfully. Así que vivan el evangelio con alegría. Living the gospel is not hard. Vivir el evangelio no es difícil. Not living the gospel. No vivir el evangelio. Is what's hard. Es lo que es difícil. What? And it is did he not hear how they said if they if if they hated me they will hate you? See, he's saying this speaking from a direct case of being a gentile. Our the hatred towards our people comes because we're Christ's people, right? So when it says that you will be hated above all nations for my name's sake, a nation is a people; it's not a religion. So we are the most hated people because of Christ, right? And I get that. So he don't fully understand that to say it's just easy. No, no, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's going to be hard. Matter of fact, let me tell you, if y'all ain't got y'all adult baptism yet and retransformed into a man, let me tell you, the moment you come out that water, the battle really begins. The moment you come out that water, you about to get attacked like nobody's business because you drew a line in the sand. This Satan's world, and you just drew a line in the sand with your baptism, cleaning, cleansing yourself of your past sins as an adult, knowing that when you every step forward from this day, it's going to be the, the, the best step you could do. When you're younger, you don't always make the best steps. You make what you believe is the right step. But once you hit a certain age, you're trying to only make the best steps. Because you done went into that water and you renewed. You done came out clean. You don't want to dirty yourself up. You know, once you, everybody, you written in the book of life at birth. A lot of people don't know that. But sins, like the Bible says, sins get you blotted out. If y'all want me to do a study on this, let me know. On any of these topics that I bring up in, in immediately, let me know if y'all want me to do a detailed study. But you written into the book of life at birth. Sins get you blotted out of the book of life. The baptism washes away your sin. Now you're back into the book of life. If you get back out the water and go right back into the old life and continue doing all the same type of sins and not trying to walk that better step, guess what? You just muddied up your baptism. Right, you just dirty, just you just like cleaning clothes and then going and jumping right in the mud. It's like I just washed these clothes, now I'm about to go jump in the mud. Right, you don't want to do that. Let's keep it going. Joyful to live it. Yes, de alegría vivirlo, da gozo. Okay. All right, so that's it for the first video. This next video is uh. I'm going to let her, like I see, you see, I got through all the videos already. That's sad. I got to start all the way over, right? But I'm going to let her break it down. This is from, uh, this is called A New Heaven and a New Earth, right? Lady L, Life Talk. She's going to break down Revelations, and I'm going to let her do the breaking down and maybe do a little commentary in between. Let's keep it going. <clears throat> Hello all, it's Lady L with Lady L Life Talks. I'm so excited today. Today we're going to be reading through Revelation Shalom, Lady L. <laughs> 21 and a little bit of 22. I'm so excited. I love God's word. Okay, we're going to be going to Revelation starting in 21 um, verse 1. It says, a new heaven and a new earth. Uh, mm. I'm excited already. It reads in verse one, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Hmm. After reading this, how is it that some people think that 
you know, the earth will never be destroyed. It literally says it's going to pass away. So let's continue. Let's continue. I got off track for a moment. It says for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. We won't be separated by the ocean any longer. I Verse two, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. Ooh. All right, I just wanted to put a post in. I didn't want to stop it earlier. But uh, if y'all would like me to do a research, uh, a study on that, like I say, just drop down which of these talking points y'all want me to do a study on, right? Because the uh, Enoch and there's other books that go into what happens. Like, I, 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 like based off of what I read, the earth becomes a black hole and sucks everything into the universe including the sun and hell kind of spits itself up on top of earth so it's at the end of this earth it's going to be a very bad barren dangerous place uh wicked place right and we're going to kind of discuss that a little bit uh today in some of the scriptures but if you want me to do a more detailed study on that let me know we could get it let's go and i heard a loud voice from the throne saying look God's dwelling place is now among the people mm. and he will dwell with them. He's going to live with us. We're going to get to be in his presence. We're going to get to see God's face. Can you believe it? Okay. It says, let's come. Let me pause it because it always says glory. I don't, th I don't know if we can see God's face. I think maybe he, his glory is too bright to even see his face. I think it's, we'll be able to bask in his glory, right? Let's keep it going. Continue, it says, they will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Hmm. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Hmm. There will be no more death, no more mourning or crying or pain hmm. for the old order of things has passed away because the, the bible says that the last thing that satan that the last thing christ puts under his footstool will be death himself right so death won't have an effect over the living no more let's keep it going curse will be gone <laughs> no more curse the earth will no longer be cursed anymore he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Mm. Then he said, write this down for these words are worthy, trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end to the thirsty <laughs> I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Okay. To those who are victorious, those who are victorious will inherit all of this and I will be their God and they will be my children. But here we go. Okay. There's Thank a little you. caveat there. But the cowardly the unbelieving the vile the murderers the sexually immoral those who practice magic arts the idolaters and all liars they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur this is the second death you don't want to be part of that second uh, death uh. we're gonna go down a little further to well yeah because supposedly or what what i've read you know there's sheol or hell and then there's a lake of fire and then there's the bosom of abraham so the people in sheol or hell at this current time aren't currently in the lake of fire not right now let's keep going verse 22 we're going to continue there it says i did not see a temple in the city 
because the Lord God Almighty himself and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. Let's let's pause for a moment right there. I kind of think of that as, I'm not sure if the moon and the sun is really going to disappear. I kind of think of it the same as when... All right, let's pause it, because... Uh... Sorry, y'all. I'm gonna have to go push my door up. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay. Okay. Dang. Okay. Sorry about that, y'all. So, uh, we're going to actually go into that because uh, Adam, before he was kicked out the garden, Adam had never felt the sunlight before. It was always a brightness, a warmth. He had never felt cold or the hot uh, weather because God's light was surrounding that whole paradise at that time. Uh, you know, he was in constant communication with the angels. And we'll be going into that in, in a couple of these scriptures. Uh, so, without further ado, let's hit these scriptures up, right? So, we're going to go to Isaiah 2. And we're going to start at 1, right? Because this is the mountain of the Lord. And the mountain of the Lord don't come before the day of the reckoning. The day of the reckoning comes first. Right? Because Christ is coming. He comes down and then he establishes his mountain and kingdom. Let's go so I can break that down. It says, The word that Isaiah, the son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the last days, all right, so it's the end times at the mountain of the Lord's house, right? Who is the Lord's house? It's not a land, it's a people. What is the Lord's house? What is, remember, God said, the Bible says he doesn't dwell in anything built by man's hands. What does he dwell in? In our bodies. We, we are the temple of the Lord, right? So it says, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established, right, in the top of the mountain. So it says that the mountain of the Lord's house, right? The mountains would mean the head, the head of the Lord's house is, you know, shall be established in the top of the mountain. So there's going to be, of course, we've always lived in the mountains. Me and one, two, three, J be talking about this. We always lived in the mountains. So it says in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Right. So the mountains of the Lord's house is the head hierarchy of God's people right when christ sets up his hierarchy the kings of the world let's say right shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above all the hills and all the nations shall flow to it flow into it right so all the nations are going to be coming into this place right and and uh many people shall go and say and we're going to go into this in the next chapter it's going to be a little bit deeper on this specific specific section because like i say this goes into the, the judgment before this happens right and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it all the nations right all all the nations nations and people and many people shall go and say come and let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house right the house is the people to the people of the god of jacob so this is showing that when it's saying the other that when it's talking about the other nations, it's not specifically speaking of our people, right? Let's get it. It says to the house. Uh, and we're going to break that down even more in the next scripture we go into after this. It says the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, right? So that means that out of Zion shall go forth the law. 
the directions, the instructions for what the word would do, right? In the word, we know the speech or word of the Lord, Lord from Jerusalem. So that's where all of the truth and the new information is going to come from. We will break that down, like I say, in more in depth in Isaiah 66. It says, and he shall judge among the nations, right? So the other nations are going to be coming to him and they're going to be getting judged and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and they shall and their spears into pruning hooks. So they're gonna take their weapons of war and turn them into weapons to cultivate the world, right? It says, Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Right? O house of Jacob, come ye, let us walk in the light of the Lord, right? So we're gonna break down what this is meaning, because even though that God has set up the hierarchy already. There's still stragglers that's going to be coming forth out the house of Jacob. And we're going to break that down just so we can prove that this top section and this are two different time events, right? It says, therefore thou hast forsaken. There, there are the same event, but this one is actually before that, right? It says, therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they replenish from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines. And they please themselves in the children of strangers, right? So they please themselves, right? To slap, clap, that's crazy. Themselves in the children of strangers. That, that slap, clap thing was crazy, right, y'all? <laughs> it says, their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of the treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots, right? Their land is also full of idols. They worship the works of their own hands, which they which with their own fingers have made. And the mean man bows down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore, forgive them not. Don't that sound like more of what we're going through now, right? The land is full of silver and gold. There's tons of people who have gold and silver. That's why so many people get shot. That's why rappers lose their lives all the time. There's tons of money. And there's a lot of starving people encircled, engulfed around a bunch of people who they believe have more money than them, right? Neither is there any end of the treasure. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots, right? Cars, vehicles. Almost everybody, everybody knows somebody who has a car. In America and over here in our lands where we live, right? It says their land is also full of idols. They worship the works of their own hands, right? That which their own fingers have made. Is that not true? Do we not put on the Jesus pieces and the, the Yeezys and whatever else? I don't have no problem with Yeezys. I'm just saying I'm not, I'm not going to buy no, no shoes that expensive, period. For what? For what? Am I going to fly? They're going to last me a hundred years without scuffling. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it says their land is also full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands. That which their own fingers have made. And the mean man boweth down. Right? So the mean man makes everybody bow down to him. And the great man humbleth himself. Therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for the fear of the Lord. And for the glory of his majesty. So this is what, what the guy was like. When Christ comes. You, you won't have to worry. It's, yeah. Because you're going to know better. Like these people. Like you said. Go hide in the rock. Enter into the rocks. Hide in the dust. Fear the Lord. Right. <laughs> and for the glory of his majesty. It says the lofty looks of man shall be humbled. And the haughtiness of man shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fence wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, which these are the ships from what I've read, that are supposed to take us back home, uh, back to the old world, right? To where we came from. 
and upon all pleasant pictures, right? And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he shall utterly abolish. No more idols, right? And, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord. So does this guy say, you going to know what side you are? Not, you going to know by based off, you know now, you don't have to wait until the end. No, some of them people going to think one thing as soon as they see Christ coming, because everybody going to see him. As soon as they see Christ coming into the earth, let me tell you, these people, like I said, they're going to be running into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty, right? When he arises to shake terribly the earth. In that day, man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, right? So what? how, do, how could we use that in modern times? People got jesus pieces all type of crosses all type of symbols this is what we do we rock the, the the fresh jewelry all that stuff you see i don't but that's what most of us do i used to when i was younger for sure but that's what most of us do and we they create these things right each one for himself to worship they do it so they can feel better about themselves so they can big themselves up right to worship means to bow down right so it's not so it says in that day man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and the bats so they made them right to be bought to bow down so people when you have a chain on guess what people do that's a nice chain you shine it remember a paid in full you shine and be i see you son the gold bbs's i see you out here shining <laughs> like so this is what we're used to. So that's all going to the clefts. It's all going for the moles and for the bats, right? It says, to go into the clefts of the rocks and to the top of the ragged rocks for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth terribly. See she from man whose breath is in his nostrils for wherein is he to be accounted, right? So it's like, Christ is here, the king here now. This is the person to follow. This is the person you need to, to be following, right? Now, let's get into this. This is Isaiah 66. We're going to start at verse 15. And this is where we're going to prove some of those other things I was saying about uh, this beginning part. Uh, this beginning part of Isaiah 2, Isaiah 2, 1 through 5, saying that, how we would already, he would have established us in the mountains of, of, of Jerusalem in that uh, when it says, oh, house of Jacob, it's not talking about the nations that came to us previously. It's saying, oh, house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. It's speaking for the ones who haven't made it there yet, right? And we're going to go into that right here. This is God's final judgment against the wicked, right? It says, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire, right? It says, for by fire and for by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. That they sanct It says that they sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh in the abomination, in the, in the mouse shall be consumed together saith the lord right so you're gonna have people that sanctifying themselves you done got a baptism you walk in with the people you purifying yourself you being clean and keeping the laws right in the gardens in in the forest in the wilderness it says behind one tree and in the mist right it says, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves, right? Let's see. They that sanctify themselves to be set apart or concentrated, right? Or clean themselves to be clean or pure, right? Will be in the garden. In the part behind one tree, right? In the mist. 
eating swine's flesh. They're going to be eating pork. Pork flesh, swine's flesh in the abomination. That's sad. The destation, the detestable thing. They're going to be eating detestable things. In the mouth shall be consumed together. So all of them is getting consumed together. That's doing that, right? Consumed together, saith the Lord. All of them getting burned, right? For I know their works in their thoughts, and it shall come to pass that I will gather all nations in tongues. All nations. This is nationalities. So people would like to say, well, this is talking about uh, we'll gather all Israel. But then these same people be wanting to debate me when I say Israel is each part of Israel could be considered a separate nation in modern times. Not according to the Bible, but according to modern times. They'll say, no, it's Israel is one nation. No, at the least Israel is two nations until it become one again. Right. That's because it's Israel and Judea. We were split up way back in the time during during David's time. Right. It says, and I will set up a sign among them, right? It says, that all na I will gather all nations in tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. This is what we were just reading about in Isaiah 2, 1 through 5. And I will set up a sign for them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, right? To Tar Tarshish, Pool, right? And I will set a sign among them, right? So it says, I will send a sign. That's what it's saying. I will set a sign. So he's going to send some, a sign among them. And I will send those, right, to sin, those to escape. Those that escape of them unto the nations, right? So he's going to send a sign into them for the people who made it into other people, other countries, nations, so the Gentiles, nations, right? To Tarshish, to Pool, to Lud, that draw the bow into Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off that have not heard my fame. So these people haven't heard of me. They saw me coming, like the Bible says, everybody going to see Christ coming, but maybe they didn't hear that whatever entered into the atmosphere was Christ, right? Neither have they seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles, right? So the people he said, sent into these other nations, that's going to be mingling with the Gentiles are going to be declaring his glory into the Gentiles. Why did it say, I will send those that escape from the nation. So during this time when we're fleeing, right, he's sending them to other areas, right? It says, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. So when he send them, they're going to declare his glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren. So this is the Gentiles. So once they declare the glory to the Gentiles, they're saying the Gentiles, are going to bring all of God, the rest of God's people, right? All of your brethren for offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain in Jerusalem. So how, how tell me how this makes sense. There's some of the stuff people say about Gentiles all being dead and some of the crazy stuff I heard. How does that make sense if God is saying he's going to make sure that when we escape, some of the people that escape are going to be linked with the Gentiles in order that they should declare his glory among the Gentiles because the Gentiles not having the spirit or, or, or the wisdom, like the Bible says, what, what is the, what is the uh, advantage of being a Jew for each and every way for the Jews are the oracles of God. So with them not having that ability to understand what's going on, they would, he would have some of his own people there to declare the glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations, upon horses and chariots and litters and upon mules, right? And upon swift beasts to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel unto the house of the Lord. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. Right? So it's saying that these people are going to be bringing uh, the children to them. The, the, obviously, God put the people there to declare his glory among the Gentiles. Right? 
So now these people are bringing back the people declaring his glory. Now, I believe this last part, it says, and I will also take them for priests and for Levites is saying the people that were brought to him, the people he put the word in to have the Gentiles bring them there. But think about it. They bring in the Gentiles like they offering. Say like, look, God, I got one. I've been treating them good. His whole family, they've been eating good. We, I didn't let them suffer one bit. Right. So we got to understand when we're doing all this hate truck that it, we some people will have you will, will have to do have your back because the Bible says so, period. But you got to defend yourself. I'm not saying don't be defensive. If person against you, hey, you got to do what you got to do. But there will be Gentiles who come and help us. And out of those people that that the Gentiles bring, God's going to turn them into Levites. Now, if y'all disagree with that particular segment, because the rest is is plain knowledge but i could get how a person would say and i will take of them priests and levites and say that this is speaking of the gentiles but it's not it says saith the lord as the children of israel bring forth the offering wait 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 it says out of all nations horses it says and they shall bring your brothering as an offering unto the lord so they giving your brother over to the lord as an offering like mary was given by her parents to the church as an offering right so it's not speaking of the speaking of the offering being taken as priests in levites not speaking of the gentiles but if y'all disagree let me know in the chat <laughs> it says for as the new heaven in the new earth right for as the new heavens in the new earth which i will make shall remain before me saith the lord so shall your seed in your name remain right and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh, all people shall come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look up upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me for for their worm shall not die. Think about that. Oh, that's rough. It says that worms shall not die. Worms, scarlet stuff, right? Neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be in a boring and abhorring unto all flesh. Ooh. All right. So I wanted to go into Revelation 20. Right? Right, here we go. It started one. Revelation 20 and 1. It says, And I, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more. To the thousand years, should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed for a little season and i saw the thrones and they that sat upon them and the judgment was given unto them and i saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of yeshia and for the word of god in which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection, right? So this is the first death. The first resurrection comes at the first death. When majority of the world is destroyed, the first people are resurrected. And then some. the people who are resurrected are going to be like the Malachim. They're going to have bodies of light they're not gonna get their old bodies back they get a new body we're gonna go into that this is the first resurrection right blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection on such the second death have no power but they shall be priests of god and of christ and shall reign with him a thousand years so regardless if the gentiles have to serve 
us, that means they make it to the the new heaven and the new earth if they make it there. If they make it to serve, they make it to the new heaven and the new earth because it says this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. Right? So if you pass, if you don't, if you pass the first death or the first resurrection, you won't be judged for the second death. You've already made it to the kingdom. You were linked with Christ for a thousand years. So you won't have to worry about uh, getting, having to go back through the process of getting the, the books open. You've made it. The books don't have to be open. The books get open at the very end after the thousand years. That's why Christ says all those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Right. It says, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together their battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up, and they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the, where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Right? And then right, this how, that's why I said that, that the books aren't open until after that. This is further proof. And I saw a great white throne to him that sat on it from whose face the earth in the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. You see, when I said hell regurgitates, regurgitates itself, I could go much deeper into this because there's a lot of other books that talk about this. Uh, uh, what well, not a lot, but I, I know of the ones that do. Right? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So that's the grace. Christ gave you the books not open for you if you endure and you make it you made it let's prove that again revelations 2 right it says I know thy works in thy in tribulation in poverty but thou art rich so this is revelations 2 and 9 but thou art rich and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are and are not but are of the synagogue but are the synagogue of Satan Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. So he said it won't be hard. That's what the white guy, it won't be hard. It's, but in the Bible it says, fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, right? And ye shall have tribulations 10 days, right? Be thou faithful unto death. Right. So keep the faith until you die. That's how you get the first resurrection. Right. And I will give thee a crown of life. So for those people who might die here, that's why it's like the tryout method for the basketball team. Right. As long as you trying and you keeping the faith and you pushing and doing the father's will. Guess what? You receive the crown of life even after you died. That's why Christ was the first of the resurrected, showing us that if we were faithful unto death, that we will receive the thing God gave to him, right? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. You see that? So he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. He that overcometh to conquer and to prevail, meaning if you die in the faith, if you die doing the things that was necessary to make it to the bosom, or if you endure to make it to physically see Christ here, right? He that overcometh shall not be hurt. You won't be affected by the second death. We went over two scriptures that said that. 
all right so now we are going into the forgotten books of Eden right and this is chapter 2 it says but when our father Adam and Eve went out of the garden they trod the ground on their feet not knowing what they were treading right because they had never felt what the ground felt like that's I'm going this to show you when the lady was speaking about the sunlight like they never knew what any of this stuff felt like because of the presence of the most high God and when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden I saw the, br the broad earth spread before them covered with stones large and small and with sand they feared and trembled and fell on their faces from the fear that came upon them and they were as dead because whereas they had hereto been in the garden land been in the garden land so they were in the garden in God's garden right beautifully planted with all manner of trees they now saw themselves in a strange land so now they were kicked out of the garden right and, and this is when they start to recognize that everything is different the ground that they feed is on everything felt different from them which they knew not and had never seen and because at that time they were filled with grace of bright nature and they had not hearts it said and they had not hearts turned towards the earthly things right so they had a bright nature not saying white like this picture is depicting like how it depicts christ coming back as burnished bronze but yet still shining like the sun right still shiny having all this radiance and glory about him right therefore had god pity on them and when he saw them fallen before the gate of the garden he sent his word so he sent christ we know that christ is the word and the word is with god and christ was there from the beginning so this like a lot of this type of stuff actually links up with the bible perfectly he sent his word unto father adam and eve right so he sent them to be to be it a, an adult figure to adam and eve and raised them from their fallen state right let's go to chapter three god said unto adam i have ordained on this earth days and years and thou and thy seed shalt dwell and walk in it until the days and the years are fulfilled when i shall send the word that created thee right so when christ says he that the spirit that was in him was there from the beginning he is the word so it says, when I send the word that created thee and against which thou hast transgressed, the word that made thee come out of the garden and that raised thee when thou was fallen, right? Yea, the word that will again save thee when the five days and a half are fulfilled, right? So he told Adam, look, the five days and a half, the word's going to come and save y'all and put you, you're going to get to go back into that place you lost, right? But when Adam heard these words from God and of the great five days and a half, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking that there would be but five days and a half for him to the end of the world. And Adam wept and prayed to God to explain it to him. Then God in his mercy, then God in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and similitude, explained to him that these were five thousand and five hundred years. And how one would then come and save him in his seed. So this, the flood and everything, this was already prophesied before the flood ever happened. That Adam and his seed would eventually be saved after 5,500 years. Right? So, so when we talk about uh, salvation, salvation is at the end. And Christ's kingdom at the end of 6,000 brings forth the seventh year which is christ's thousand years so christ is the, the king of this kingdom right and why does it say five thousand five hundred years because at this time adam was 500 right but god had before that made this covenant with our father adam in the same terms eerie he came out of the garden when he was by the tree of eve and took the fruit and gave it to to him to eat and as much as when our father Adam came out of the garden, he passed by the tree and saw how God had changed the appearance of it into another form and how it, it withered. And as Adam went to it, he feared, 
trembled and fell down. But God in his mercy lifted him up and then made this covenant with him. And again, when Adam was by the gate of the garden and saw the cherub with the sword of the flashing fire in his hand, and the cherub grew angry and frowned at him, both Adam and Eve became afraid of him and thought he meant to put them to death. So they fell on their faces and trembled with fear. But he had pity on them and showed them mercy, turning from from them wept up to heaven and prayed unto the Lord and said, so these are the, these are the angels praying to God, <laughs> you know, Lord, thou didst send me to watch at the gate of the garden with this sword of fire. But when thy servants, Adam and Eve saw me, they fell on their faces and were as dead. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do to thy servants? Then God had pity on them and showed them mercy and sent his angel to keep the garden. And the word of the Lord came unto Adam and Eve and raised them up again. So the word's been here from the Christ been doing this from the beginning. And the Lord said unto Adam, I told thee, I told thee that at the end of five days and a half, I will send my word to save thee. Strengthen thy heart, therefore, and abide in the cave of treasures of which I have before spoken of thee. And when Adam heard this word from God, he was comforted with that which God had told him, for he had told him how long he he would save him, or he had told him how he would save him, right? Let's get there. It says, but Adam and Eve wept for having come out of the garden, their first abode, so they lost their first home. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh, it was altered. He wept bitterly. He and Eve over what they had done. And they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. And as they came to it, Adam wept over himself and said to Eve, look at this cave. This is to be our prison in this world, in a place of punishment. It says, what is it compared with the garden? Right. So they had just lost paradise. What is the narrowness compared with the space of the other? What is this rock? by the side of those groves what is the gloom of this cavern compared to the light of the garden what is this overhanging ledge of a rock to shelter us compared with the mercy of the lord that overshadowed us so when we were speaking of revelations now you're getting where i'm going in here because it's going to break down some of the things he he felt like what he was missing when he left the garden and these are the same things god promised him he and his children would get in are mentioned in revelations that people get confused about right <clears throat> what is this soil of this cave compared to the garden land the earth strewed with stones and that planted with delicious fruits fruit trees and adam said to eve look at my eyes and at mine it says look at thine eyes and at mine which afore held angels in heaven praising, and they too without ceasing. So they saying, "Look in my eyes. We used to see God. We used to see the. We used to feel the glory of God. We used to see the Word. We used to see the angels. We used to see them singing. Right? We used to see them praising. It's like, look at thine eyes and at, and at mine. Look at your eyes, wife. Look at my eyes, which before the angels, before it says which afore. So before beheld the angels in heaven praising in in they too without ceasing so it's like they were praising too along with the angels it's like watching their favorite show they had their favorite show on their whole existence and now their favorite show just cut off right it says but now we do not see as we did our eyes have become a flesh they cannot see in the like manner as they saw before and Adam said again to Eve, what is our body today compared to what it was in the former days when we dwelt in the garden? After this, Adam did not like to enter the cave under the underhanging rock, nor would he ever have entered it. But he bowed to God's orders and said to himself, unless I enter the cave, I shall again be a transgressor. So Adam was at this point in time was doing everything in his possible in his 
ability not to mess up and go against God again, right? Then Adam and Eve entered into the cave, stood praying in their own tongue, unknown to us, but which they knew well. And they prayed, and Adam raised his eyes and saw the rock of the roof, the rock in the roof of the cave that covered him overhead, so that he could neither see heaven nor God's creatures. So he wept and smote heavenly upon his breast until he dropped and was dead. And Eve sat weeping, for she believed he was dead. And she arose and spread her hands towards God, suing him for mercy and pity, and said, O oh God, forgive me in my sin. The Lord which I have the forgive me in my in my sin, the sin which I have which I committed, and remember it not against me. For I alone caused thy servant to fall from the garden into this lost estate. For the light into his this darkness, from light into this darkness. And from the abode of joy into this prison. O oh God, look upon this, thy servant, thus fallen, and raise him from his death, that he may weep and repent of his transgressions, which he committed through me. Take not away his soul this once, but let him live, that he may stand after the measure of his repentance, and do thy will as before his death. But if thou do not raise him up, O oh God, then, O oh God, take away my own soul, soul, that I be like him, and leave me not this dungeon, one alone. For I cannot stand alone in this world, but with him only. For thou, O oh God, didst cause a slumber to come upon him, and didst take a bone from his side, and didst restore the flesh in the place of it, by thy divine power. And thou didst take me the bone and make me a woman bright like him with heart, reason and speech and in flesh like unto his own. And thou didst make me after the likeness of his content continence by thy mercy and thy power. O Lord, I and he are one and thou, O God, art our creator. Thou art he who made us both in one day therefore O God give him life that he may be with me in this strange land while we dwell in it on account of our transgressions but if thou wilt not give it to me then take me even more like him that we both may die the same day and Eve wept bitterly and fell upon and fell upon our father Adam for her great sorrow so this, this was the first time Adam had noticed darkness he couldn't see anything. He couldn't see the heavens. He couldn't see the creatures. He couldn't see anything. And it's actually a different version that I have that actually says, like, he couldn't see Eve in front of him. <laughs> at, at, you know, like he had to touch her. He was touched. They were like that close where they were touching, but he couldn't see her still, right? It says, but God looked down upon them, for they had killed themselves through great grief. But he would raise them and comfort them. He therefore sent his word, Christ, unto them, that they should stand and be raised forthward. And the Lord said unto Adam and Eve, You transgressed of your own free will, until you came out of the gardens in which I had placed you. Of your own free will have you trespassed through your desires for divinity, greatness, and an exalted stage such as I have, so that I deprived you of, of the bright nature in which you were then. So I took all of that away from you because you wanted to be like me. And I made you come out of the garden to this land, rough and full of trouble. If only you had not tra transgressed my commandment and had kept my laws and had not eaten of the fruit of the tree near which I told you not to come. And there were fruit trees in the garden better than that one. But the wicked Satan who continued not, as, not in his first estate, nor kept his faith, in whom was no good intent towards me, and who, though I had created him, yet set me at naught and sought the Godhead, so that I hurled him down from heaven. He it is who made the tree appear pleasant in your eyes until you ate of it by hearkening into him. 
Thus have you transgressed my commandment, and therefore I have brought upon you all these sorrows. For I am God the Creator, who when I created my creatures, did not intend to destroy them. But after they had sorely roused my anger, I put them with grievous plagues, I punished them with grievous plagues until they repent. But if on the contrary they still continue hardened in their transgressions, they shall be under a curse forever. Whew. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Okay, let's go. Here, here go a good one. It says, Then Adam wept and said, Oh God, when we do it in the garden and in our hearts were lifted up, we saw the angels that sang, that sang praises in heaven, but now we do not see as we were used to do. Nay, when we entered the cave, all creation became hidden from us. It says, Then God the Lord said unto Adam, When thou was under subjection to me, thou hadst a bright nature within thee, and for that reason couldst thou see things afar off. But after thy trans transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee, and it was not left to thee to see things afar off, but only near at hand, after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. Right? <clears throat> I was trying to find the sun one. It might be. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I'm not going to continue that because I know this book is long and my back is killing me. But you get where I was going. I really went in there so that we could discuss the bright nature that Adam had in uh, the bright light of God's glory that the lady mentioned in Revelation that Adam felt when they were in the, uh, uh, the, the uh, garden, right? So we're going to go to 2 Baruch 51, right? And it says, this is what we're going to wrap it up off of. And it, it will happen after this day, which I appointed is over, that both the shape of those who are found to be guilty, as also the splendor of those who have proved to be righteous will be changed, right? So this is talking about after the thousand years, when the new heaven and the new earth is about to appear, right? For the shape of those who now act wickedly will be made more evil than it is now, so that they shall suffer torment, right? So people, the earth is going to turn into a torment land, and, you, and the people going to have a shape to deal with that. Maybe some lit, lizard being or something, because you got to have a, a, some type of physical ability to deal with getting lava, walking through burning lava for eternity right it says for the shape of those who now act wickedly will be made more evil than it is now so that they shall suffer torment also for the honor and splendor splendor of those who prove to be righteous on the account of my torah right those who possess intelligence in their life and those who planted the root of wisdom in their heart their honor and splendor will then be magnified by transformations. And the shape of their face will be changed into the light of their beauty. Remember, we got into the, that beings of light that we were talking about, right? So that they may acquire and receive the undying world, which is promised to them, right? So the new heaven and the new earth, the undying one, right? Therefore, especially they who will then come will be sad, right? Because they have despised my Torah. So the people who despise God's laws and his ways are going to be sad. And stop their ears lest they hear wisdom and receive intelligence. Unless they was to hear it and, 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 and produce intelligence behind it, right? 
it says when then they therefore will see that those over them they are exalted now will then be more exalted and magnified than them right so it says when they therefore will see that those over whom they are exalted now so the people the, the wicked ones who are in power now they exalted now right will then be more exalted and magnified than they so the people who are under them will be more magnified and exalted than the people who are in charge right the evil ones right it says then both of these in those will be changed right so both will be changed together these into honor and splendor of the malachim the malachim are the angels in those into startling visions and horrible shapes and they will waste away even more right so this is for the wicked this is for the righteous right for they will first see and then they will go away to be tormented so they got to get their shapes first and then they got to watch and see what these other people will receive like it was describing in revelations right miracles however will appear at their own time to whom are saved because of their works and for whom the torah is now a hope and intelligence expectation and wisdom a trust right for they shall see that world which is now invisible to them and they will see a time which is now hidden to them and time will no longer make them older for they will live in the heights of the world like we were reading right we were just reading that we live in the heights in the mount right for they will live in the heights of that world and they will be like the malachim and they will be equal to the stars so when the lady said she didn't understand uh uh if all the, if she didn't know or believe if all the stars was going to disappear oh they will the stars are are malachim they're all beings created by god just like the earth the earth is a living like science tells us that the earth is living it was created by god the earth follow god's order the winds follow god's order the suns follow god's order you know what don't follow god's order man all of them things follow god order on cue the seasons come in on time right the new year comes in on time right on that note uh the new year is coming up tomorrow right it ain't tomorrow the fourth happy new moon everybody happy new year happy new year <laughs> all right it says for they will live in the heights okay okay and time will no longer make them older for they will live in the heights of that world and they will be like the malachim and equal to the stars and they will be changed into any shape which they wish from the beauty to loveliness and from the light to the splinter of honor right for the extents of the kingdom of paradise will be spread out for them and to them will be shown the beauty of the majesty of the living beings under the throne so all the creatures in the heavens all the things god created in the heavens will be shown just like we just read in adam and eve how they were able to see all the angels and to feel the grace of god and to see the word and everything they were able to experience is coming back just like it was promised in that book, right? And just like the Bible says, right? It says, as well as the host of the Malachi, right? Those who are held by my word, now lest they should show themselves and those who are withheld by my command so that they may stand at their place until their coming has arrived. So they got to watch this. They got to watch what the people who did what god wanted is gonna receive so they can now go get what they gonna get right in the in the excellence of the righteous will then be greater than that of the malachim for the first will receive the last those whom they expected the last and the last those whom they had heard that had gone away right those of whom they had heard that had gone away and doesn't the bible 
you know people would say see and that's why i say you got to know the bible and actually to go to these books so you can link bible scriptures with them which make them relevant what they're saying the bible says do you not know that we would judge the angels enoch judged the angels and then it also says after enoch that did you not know we would judge the angels right so it says for the first will receive the last those of whom they expected in the last those of whom they had heard that they had gone away for they had been saved from the world of affliction and have put down the burden of anguishes because of which man lost their life it says because of which man lost their life and for what have those who were on earth exchanged their souls right so people lost their lives for this to be saved from this affliction of this world people lost their lives to make it into the kingdom but it's sin but but for what have those who were on the earth exchanged their soul so you were alive and you gave up your soul to other spirits other than god's spirits for what it says for once they chose for themselves that time which cannot pass away without afflictions, and they chose for themselves that time of which the end is full of lamentations and evil. So one people who didn't sell their soul on the world, who didn't exchange their soul for nothing in the earth, right? He said they did that themselves for a time, for that time which cannot pass away without affliction. So no punishment and it can't pass away. Right? And the other people who sold they sold, they chose for themselves that time of which the end is full of lamentations and evil. And they have denied the world that does not make those who come to it older. And they have rejected the time which causes splendor, which causes splendor, so that they are not coming to the splendor of which I have spoken to you before and with that note i know this has been a long bible study y'all <laughs> i i try to give y'all shorter ones i knew this was going to be a, a longer one if y'all want to break down or go over any of these details because i'm well versed in all the books that i read and many 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 books i'm not saying that i know them all by word but i do have a really good memory so if i start thinking about a subject god allows me to remember it and where it is in, in some of these books so that's all praises to the most high God. Right? Call out higher by Shimmy and Shia. <laughs> uh, uh, thank y'all. The water, the water. Thank y'all for tuning in. I just want to say that uh, if y'all like the video or if you didn't, hit that like button. <laughs> Drop a comment. Let's talk about it. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. If 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 you are subscribed or whatever, it don't matter if you subscribe or not. Eh. Let's talk about this. If there's any parts that you would like me to go more in depth on, I could do future videos going in depth on some of these other things regarding the, the new kingdom or the earth's destruction or anything like that. Just let me know and I would be happy to go into it with y'all, show y'all the book, share the information. This is all for the glory of the Most High God. Once again, I just want to say the water. Uh, I didn't advertise none of the other two videos, so I will do that for the Cash App in case y'all want to donate. Uh, for the sister who told me that I should set up, uh, I can't remember what she said I should set up. But another thing, a PayPal, um, I got to do that. I haven't done that. I wasn't planning on uh, trying to get no donations. I was Like I say, one of the brothers I know told me I should get the donations for what I'm trying to do, which... It's really, I'm trying to do something that in in our hard time would help people. Not saying it would save people, but it could help people out of a hard time. Uh, so I'm trying to get prepared for that. So on that note, uh, thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, the water, like I said again, the water, thank you. Kaula, uh, Hayabai, Shemeshaya, all praises to the Most High in the name of His Son. And Baraka Thai, Baraka Thai, y'all. Peace on that note. Peace out, man. Peace out, Baraka Thai. Kwame Asharala. That means uh, rise Israel, right? Kwame Asharala. Baraka Thai. Peace and blessings to y'all.